Today, the secret weapon name will be met with immediate excitement from Alton Towers fans. Synonymous with the park's best additions, this code name developed back in the 1990s and has been used numerous times since. As a fan of the coasters it has spawned, I wanted to explore its origins and how this code name has developed over time. So let's begin by traveling back in time to see the very first secret weapon. In the late 1980s, John Broom, founder of Vulton Towers, began talks with Schwarzkopf, whom he wanted to build the park's very first custom roller coaster. This coaster is believed to have been planned to be built next to the Corkscrew roller coaster, but unfortunately, plans fell through when the Two Swords group bought the park. This coaster is sometimes wrongfully labelled as Secret Weapon 1. However, the concept of building large-scale custom coasters at the park, which would eventually come to be known as the Secret Weapons, can sort of be traced back to this very first failed project. It wasn't until a few years later that the name would actually be first used. In 1991, the resort developed plans to replace Thunder Looper, the Schwarzkopf Shuttle Loop Coaster, which occupied the site where the blade now resides. Work had already started on blasting out a pit on the site in 1991, with many of the resulting rocks actually being used to theme Katanga Canyon. Before the resort had even decided what the development was going to be, John Wardley, development director at Alton Towers, had his eye on the Aerodynamics Pipeline Coaster prototype. He drew up plans for one of these coasters themed around a secret military facility, and he gave it the codename Secret Weapon. This would later become known as Secret Weapon 1. Unfortunately, this project was put on hold until a year later, when it was revived under the codename Secret Weapon 2. However, after riding the prototype of this coaster, Wardley decided that this coaster style was too boring, so he began to search for something else. Thankfully, this search for Secret Weapon 3 would see more success. Wardley began to search for a new coaster style and discovered a roller coaster being developed by Bolliger and Mabillard for Six Flags Great America. Wardley contacted B&M, who gave him the specifications of this prototype, allowing Wardley to begin designing Secret Weapon 3. Wardley actually went over to America to ride this coaster, Batman the Ride, a very familiar invert for any Six Flags fans watching, as this coaster has now been cloned a whopping seven number of times. After experiencing the world's first B&M invert, Wardley became even more sure that he'd made the right choice. Throughout 1992, Wardley developed the coaster's layout, keen to make it both thrilling for riders and eye-catching to passers-by. With the help of Alton Towers marketing director, Nick Varney, Wardley came up with the theme for Secret Weapon 3. The coaster would be themed to an alien creature, trapped beneath the ground and would be called, you guessed it, Nemesis. With this came a brand new area called Forbidden Valley. Before the arrival of Nemesis, this area was known as Thunder Valley. Nemesis opened up as the first B&M inverted coaster in Europe on the 19th of March 1994, and it was an absolute hit. The ride experience itself was unlike anything most had ever experienced, and its unique theming did wonders to add to its appeal. To the day it closed to be retracked, Nemesis was an absolute beast, and thankfully, it seems Nemesis Reborn is up to the task of maintaining the coaster's legacy. With this standard set, Alton Towers found itself receiving more success than ever before. Just a few years later, in 1997, it became clear the park was ready to bring us something new again. The area once known as Fantasy World was totally flattened, with its rides all being relocated save for the black hole. Excitement grew as it became clear big things were to come, but with a security guard patrolling the site and a deep hole being dug, it was pretty hard to guess what. Then, as a Christmas gift to fans, the very first hint was released. In the form of a Christmas card, the first promotional image for Secret Weapon 4 was released. Then, in March 1998, Oblivion opened up to much excitement, introducing the world to the sinister government facility called X Sector. Advertised as the world's first vertical drop roller coaster, this very first B&M dive coaster actually only featured an 87.5 degree drop. 
a truly 90 degree drop was not yet possible. But since then, dive coaster technology has come a long way, and truly vertical and even beyond vertical dive coasters do now exist. The next secret weapon would see a long term project of John Wardley's finally come to fruition. Always the roller coaster innovator, Wardley had dreamed up plans for a flying coaster back in 1994, before the technology was actually possible. Thankfully, eight years later, B&M were able to make his concept come to life. Secret Weapon 5 was not such a big secret as the others, having received a model in Towers Trading and because of viewing gaps in the construction fences which allowed fans to keep a close eye on construction. Built on the site of the beast, this coaster saw a new theme come to Forbidden Valley. Nemesis now had to share her home with the Cadbury-sponsored theme of Air, B&M's very first flying coaster. Sadly, Air lacked theming due to budget cuts, which even the Cadbury sponsorship wasn't enough to make up for. Therefore, thematically, it wasn't quite the expansion that Forbidden Valley deserves. Following Secret Weapon 5, it would actually be a whopping eight years until the next Secret Weapon came to be. Come 2004, Alton Towers' management team had decided it was time for a rebrand. They wanted to move away from the 1990s magic branding. This saw them remove beloved features such as the use of the song in the Hall of the Mountain King and, of course, the secret weapon code name. Clearly a misguided decision, as both have more than made a comeback since. During this time of silly decisions, the park did receive two new roller coasters, both of which didn't utilise the secret weapon code name, and to be honest, weren't really worthy of it anyway. First was a small addition of Spinball Wizard, a far jump from any of the secret weapons. But next did come something a little more secret weapon-esque. 2005 saw the addition of Rita, Queen of Speed. With pretty poor theming and a rather disappointing layout, many were all too happy to see this coaster excluded from the secret weapon club. Truly a time of strange decisions for the park. This period was thankfully rather short-lived. In 2007, two swords were bought by Merlin Entertainments, and the first sign of positive change was the return of the use of In the Hall of the Mountain King, the iconic Alton Towers theme tune that has remained ringing in our ears ever since. With this positive change, it was only a matter of time until the secret weapon name made a comeback. 2008 would see the 28-year-old corkscrew roller coaster leave to make way for Secret Weapon 6. Although a difficult goodbye, the news of another secret weapon certainly helped ease the pain for Alton Towers fans. 2009 saw construction and promotion begin, which promised a world's first element on the roller coaster. Promotion also confirmed that an entire area re-theme would come, with taglines telling fans to surrender in 2010 and ride the Demon of the Dark Forest. 2009 would see a truck arrive at Alton Towers carrying a mysterious load labelled Authorised Personnel Only, Secret Weapon Inside. Another cool bit of promotion came in the way of snow carriages, built from the year's heavy snowfall. In March 2010, 13 opened as the world's first vertical 3-4 drop roller coaster. Unfortunately, many were disappointed and felt that this coaster didn't live up to its psycho coaster claims. Plus, the loss of Ugland for the Dark Forest was not too popular. Nevertheless, Alton Towers thankfully didn't abandon the secret weapon project here. In January 2012, planning applications would emerge for an eight-inversion roller coaster located on the site once home to the Black Hole. Eventually, these plans would expand, and the concept would see an additional six inversions added. A countdown appeared upon the construction site but in January 2013, it was removed, creating speculation that the project was delayed. Due to open in March, Secret Weapon 7 would not be complete until the 31st of May. Despite multiple opening delays, the marketing campaign was more than enough to keep excitement high. During Scarefest 2012, the resort debuted the Sanctuary Scare Maze, introducing guests to the sinister Ministry of Joy and their experiments to make people smile 
always. It would later be revealed that this maze was directly linked to the Secret Weapon 7, set to be called the Smiler, with the ride being the latest in the Ministry of Joy's experiments. The Sanctuary made an unexpected return at the start of March 2013 to try and bridge the gap caused by the ride's delayed opening. The coaster also had a promotional app, which allowed guests to play games and win prizes. Then, its logo was even projected on Big Ben and, even better, painted on a sheep. Finally, following all this, the Smiler, manufactured by Gerslauer, opened as the world's first 14 inversion roller coaster, and is still to this day the coaster with the most inversions in the world. In February 2016, Alton Towers confirmed that the end of 2015 season had seen their water ride, The Flume, close for good. This fueled ever-present rumours that Secret Weapon 8 was on its way. This was soon confirmed and by April, details were found showcasing that a new roller coaster was coming to the area once occupied by the flume. Formal plans were submitted on the 31st of May 2016 and it was confirmed that this new coaster would be manufactured by Great Coasters International. With this, Alton Towers Resort would finally be getting a wooden roller coaster. Marketing began with the new season in March 2017, when banners were placed on the fences around the construction site and a Secret Weapon 8 page was launched on the resort website. On National Roller Coaster Day, Wednesday the 16th of August, for those that don't know off the top of their heads, Alton Towers released a video which included a teaser for Secret Weapon 8. This stated that guests would be chosen at Scarefest and saw the arrival of runes to the Secret Weapon 8 webpage. A few days later, on Friday the 18th of August, the resort announced a new scare maze called The Welcoming Be Chosen. In promotion for this, the same runes could be seen, making most suspect the link. The Welcoming Be Chosen introduced a peculiar cult who had banished themselves to the woodlands hundreds of years ago and teased themes of enlightenment and rituals with the key phrase Feed the Flames being chanted by the villagers and written in runes throughout the maze. Eagle-eyed guests could also spot a mysterious effigy in one scene, which appeared to be very similar to the rising feature in the construction site next door. On Monday the 8th of January 2018, it was revealed the coaster would be called Wicker Man, and it was advertised as the world's first roller coaster experience, fusing wood and fire. Retired attraction developer John Wardley was actually brought in at a late stage to consult on the ride. He stated that he was very impressed with the basic layout, the choice of manufacturer and the theme in concept, but criticised the ride's profile, in particular calling the first drop atrocious. The first two drops were subsequently redesigned based on ideas that he submitted, but the project was too far into development to alter other areas that he described as lacking major thrill. Thanks to this, many enthusiasts credit John Wardley with saving this coaster from being an absolute disaster. With a slightly delayed opening day thanks to heavy snow, Wickham and Welcome Riders on the 20th of March 2018. This GCI wooden coaster is by far one of the most highly themed roller coasters we have ever received here in the UK. So, there you have it. That is the story of Alton Tower's secret weapons. We truly believe that this is some of the best theme park marketing ever seen, and we'd like to ask if you have any hopes or predictions for Secret Weapon 9. Do you think we'll see this project come anytime soon? Personally, whatever it is and whenever it is, I'd love to see another tie-in of promotional scare maze. Would you? Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, feed the flames and check out my links in the description and some of my other videos.